Hello my darlings, I hope you're all doing very very well, I hope you are sitting comfortably, you are cosy and you have your snacks and your beverages, I hope you're all snuggled up because I'm about to take you on a wild ride, I'm not even joking with this one, okay, we're back for season 4 of Tattoo Gate, Th there's more, Could there's more. How is there more? <laughs> You're probably all like, oh my god, I'm exhausted. Like, does anyone else have tattoo gate burnout? Because, like, this has been going on since May, okay? So, like I was saying, back in May, a TikTok was posted by a lovely lady by the name of Christine. She documented the fact that she was scammed by a tattoo artist by the name of Lindsay Joseph. And this tattoo artist had asked her for a lot of money for a consultation fee, a design fee, and then alterations to this design. And, like, the sketch that was done for the tattoo design was very half assed and then we find out that it was a copy from an illustration. That part of Tattoo Gate ended well because Christine ended up getting the tattoo that she wanted. A tattoo artist by the name of Matt Vaught did the tattoo for her for free and she was flown out to Matt because this whole Tattoo Gate thing is happening in Canada. Matt works in America. So that was really sweet and it was a happy ending. There was also another victim of Lindsay's behaviour. This person got goes by the name of Re. She documented her experience also and I don't think she ever got a resolution to anything. And then it turns out that Lindsay got her audacity of charging so much for tattoos and design fees and deposits and all of that from a very well-known tattoo artist by the name of Ross Abbott and he has this business called Launchpad where he helps tattoo artists run their business more smoothly and to get the best out of their business and basically charge a lot of money, right? It was given pyramid scheme, MOM kind of vibes. After all of that, we pretty much thought, okay, well, that's the end of that. Figured out who's responsible. There's been somewhat of a resolution and, you know, there had been nothing from Lindsay at all. She's still to this day not said one word. So that was pretty much like the end of it until Lindsay started taking legal action against Rhee and Christine because they spoke about their experience on social media. And I guess Lindsay was coming after them for defamation, even though they were just saying their experience, their truth. It's not defamation if it's true. So I'm not sure what's going on with that and if that's still happening. Obviously with legal things, it takes so dang long so it could have been dropped or it could still be going on i don't know that was pretty much it i thought okay we probably won't hear anything about tattoo gate for a long time until maybe this legal situation is dealt with i don't know and then <laughs> this is where we get to season four okay we're on season four now i got tagged in a tiktok that was posted by an account by the name of Torch and Tonic. This account is run by a lovely woman named Teresa. Teresa normally uploads content of her arts and crafts. She's been making adorable Christmas ornaments as of late and oh, they're so sweet. It just fills my heart with festive joy to see content like that. Anyway, in the TikTok that I was tagged in that Teresa had posted, it was a photo slideshow of Teresa documenting her tattoo experience with, yep, you guessed it, None other than Lindsay Joseph, the tattoo artist responsible for Tattoo Gate. Teresa noticed that I had been tagged in her TikTok, I think a, a few times, a handful of times. I'm not sure the amount of times I was tagged in it, but at least a couple. And she reached out to me. She said, hi there, you keep getting tagged in my post. Sorry about that. I'm assuming because you covered Tattoo Gate and I'm another sucker who has been caught up in the mistake of trusting her to tattoo me. And I said, hi, lovely. I uh, haven't noticed because I check my mentions every now and then, but yes, I covered it on YouTube mainly, which is true. I only really check my mentions once a week because normally my mentions are just people tagging me in tattoo TikToks for my tattoo enthusiast reacts to tattoo TikToks series. So I looked at her profile, I said, I'll have a look at your TikTok now. And then I was like, oh my Lord, when did this happen? So we had a conversation, which I will talk about in a moment, but I did ask Teresa if I could cover this in a YouTube video and she gave me the go ahead. Okay, so this is the TikTok that Teresa posted. Again, it's one of those like photo slideshows. So it says, what I wanted, design inspo sent to the artist. I wanted a sunset colors on top, not green. So the next one says, should have been my first clue and it's my own fault for not questioning. So this is the stencil. So if we look back at what she wanted, she wanted like straight lines as we can see. Well, almost straight lines. It's like an artistic line, but it's not like all over the place, you know, like this is quite thick and all of that. And then uh, this is more of the sense of other things. It says like, what the hell is this anyway? This is one of four flowers my daughters drew. 
these were supposed to be watercolor so then this is what the tattoo looks like it says waves and this looks nothing like the inspo image which again is so correct not even close like <laughs> the audacity obviously with inspo um you don't want it to be exact same because then you're copying someone else's tattoo but the it's just far too different even with like the um like the way it's colored and everything like it's just not what like the inspo watercolor that to me is 10 out of 10 watercolor right and then this it's not giving the same vibe at all okay i did say i loved it i was in shock and panic and didn't know what else to say do or act which i think the majority of us would be like especially me i'm not very good at confrontation sometimes it's best to just leave the situation and then communicate afterwards especially as we know what Lindsay is like if you remember back to tattoo gate Season one, two, and three. Lindsay is, um, she's good at scamming. She would find a way to get out of, you know, someone being upset, Tr just trust me. <laughs> uh, Teresa said, I paid $1,500 at this first session for four flower outlines and this. $1,500, okay, for that. $1,500 for that, okay. I got charged a reduced fee because she was on the phone while I sat there. This is after the second session. Look at it. Does that scream like good quality watercolor tattoo to you if we remember back to the inspo picture? No. I had message saying I needed her to add straight lines, which she replied she had planned on it. But the addition of six lines, I never said I wanted six lines or for them to be colored. Doing this took the entire appointment to do that because i've spoke to Teresa. i will give you more info and context on this whole situation but we're just looking at this now but there, there is more info to this anyway this costs another one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars one thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars this is canadian i will say i don't know if that makes a difference to anyone not to me you know that's still a lot of money even if you um convert it into you know wherever you live money okay it's a lot of money for that $1,920 I, uh, where did Lindsay get the audacity to do this please and thank you this is it I still have my deposit which is $850 I asked for it to be refunded seeing this isn't going to end with a complete tattoo $850 gets me a little over two hours apparently she was willing to offer me two hours of free time to finish so noble of her for how much she spent on just some outlines and a little bit of the watercolor and the waves behave behave this is a four thousand four hundred and fifty dollar tattoo consultation a hundred and eighty dollars a hundred and eighty dollars for a consultation you should not be paying for consultations i fully believe you should not be paying for consultations yes you know as a tattoo artist your time is being taken up by a consultation but like consultations only take like what half an hour an hour maximum <laughs> And well, yes, you're working in that time. I don't know. I've just personally never had to pay for a consultation before, you know? And if you do have to pay for a consultation, I wouldn't pay any more than $50. That's all I'm saying, okay? A deposit, $850, which to me seems pretty crazy. I know for a lot of popular tattoo artists, they normally say, oh, it's a percentage of how much the tattoo is going to cost. So it does end up being quite a high deposit. And I fully believe tattoo artists should charge a deposit fee just in case you don't show up. At least then they get some money but $850? <laughs> it's crazy for me. Especially as, like, Lindsay with Peace and Love isn't, like, a super well-known tattoo artist. She's not, like, super famous. Well, I guess she is now because she is the Tattoo Gate tattoo artist, but she's not famous for a good reason. I don't know. I think the most I've ever spent on a deposit is, like, 100 quid, I think if that and again first appointment $1,500 second appointment $1,920 $4,450 for that like a few flowers and a little bit of you know watercolor at the bottom there this was what she considers two days worth of work how is even four more hours supposed to get this finished that's two days of work i just it blows my mind two days i think my blast over sleeve took four five day sessions and all about five day sessions and like there is a lot going on with the sleeve you know what i mean but i think it took five sessions and all which were day sessions and they range from like 
five hours to eight hours, depending, I don't know. Anyway, the caption to this TikTok says, I am the asshole when you just don't listen and think you are the unicorn. I really wanted this tattoo. I'm going through an incredibly emotional season in my life and had talked about adding new flowers for a long time. I already have a watercolor tattoo and really wanted my kids to draw new Sharpie style flowers. I should have walked away in the beginning. I actually really liked talking with her. I trusted this artist. I asked her lots of questions. She said these people were basically lying. Clearly I'm a sucker and now I've spent over $4,000 for basically something unfinished that isn't what I wanted. So like I said earlier, I asked Teresa like, when did this happen? and she basically told me everything. Teresa had actually reached out to Lindsay in January. So this was way, 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 way before Tattoo Gate. Because again, Tattoo Gate happened in May. Teresa knew of Lindsay's work because she had a friend that got tattooed by her and she really liked the tattoo. Teresa then said she wanted a watercolor tattoo on her arm because she had a big watercolor tattoo on her back. So she wanted them to kind of connect. When Teresa was first in communication with Lindsay, again, back in January, she said that talking to Lindsay was great. She seemed incredibly nice. So everything was good at that point. There was absolutely no red flags. Everything looked green for Teresa and it sounds like a good situation to me also. Teresa then said that she went through some personal things so she had to postpone the tattoo until the summer and one of her friends did warn Teresa about about Lindsay and told her all about Tattoo Gate. So Teresa did ask Lindsay some questions about the tattoo and Tattoo Gate. And Lindsay's response to this was the fact that the two women who were involved in Tattoo Gate, so Christine and Marie, were on a witch hunt and that they were lying. <laughs> oh my days, and they were lying. Yeah, okay. Um, all of the like screenshot evidence and all of that, that, that's a lie, is it? Okay, great, good to know. Anyway, Teresa goes ahead with a consultation and I feel like we don't need to like point fingers at Teresa and blame her for going ahead with this because she had previous experience with Lindsay and everything was good back then. So she decided to give Lindsay a chance and trust in her. And the thing with Lindsay, she seems to have the gift of the gab. I truly believe that she could sell ice to an Eskimo, okay? Like she can talk her way out of anything and boost herself up and worm people in to get tattooed by her. She is a professional scammer, okay? Like the worst of the worst. Teresa sent Lindsay some inspo pics and some drawings that her children had done. And she also asked Lindsay for a sunset near her wrist, which obviously has not happened. And as we saw, the consultation fee was $180. And then along with that was the $850 deposit. Again, like we saw in the TikTok slideshow thing, at Teresa's first appointment, some line work was done. And just to do that, it took about three hours. Teresa said that the tattooing started just after 11 a.m. and then Lindsay finished just after 2 p.m. because she had to go and pick up her kids from school. That whole appointment, that's three hours, okay, was $1,500. Can you imagine making $1,500 in three hours to do that little bit of tattooing? I just... Oh my lord. <laughs> Teresa said that she wanted to love the tattoo, but she wasn't like 100% sure as we know. So Teresa reached out to Lindsay in an email and asked her to add some straight lines, just like her inspo pick that she had sent her for the next appointment. And Lindsay said she was planning on doing that anyway. Whether or not she was, I don't know. I don't know whether it was her just being like, oh yeah, I was gonna do that anyway. But like she had absolutely no plans or she did have plans. We will never know the truth with that one. Teresa had her second appointment on the 25th of October where Lindsay added six lines and more watercolor. In this session, Teresa was hoping the sunset would be done as well, but alas, it was not done, of course. Lindsay did what she wanted to do in that session and that session was $1,920. Later on, Teresa emailed Lindsay about booking her final appointment or what she thought would be her final appointment. Oh yes, this is the gift of a scammer. So of course, Lindsay said, um, you're gonna need more than one. There's, you need more than one session here, honey, of course. Even though in the consultation, uh, Lindsay said to Teresa that she would only need two sessions to do the tattoo that she wanted. This is the art of a scammer. They over promise and under deliver. 
just so they can get more out of you. They put you in a false sense of security just so they can reel you in and take advantage of you. And I would fully believe any tattoo artist that tells me, oh yeah, this will just take two sessions. I'm sure all of us have been in the position where we've been like, oh yeah, this tattoo is gonna take two sessions, no worries. Don't even think about it. We trust that it's gonna take two sessions. But in Lindsay's case, the two sessions means like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, rinse you for all your money and take my time and charge you ridiculous amount of money and make sure you have to have more sessions. So, oh wait, I can take more money. <laughs> like, this is why I fully do not blame Teresa for this at all because she was promised the two sessions. So of course, Teresa was rightfully upset at this news that she was delivered. She had already paid so much for this tattoo that isn't even really going her way. It's not looking the way she wanted it to look. The results are not what she really wanted. And then to be told that she has to spend more money, like thousands of dollars probably, to get this finished, it's just disgraceful. It's disgusting. So anyway, Teresa asked for a refund of the deposit that she has, which is the $850. And she also said that she was really disappointed in the way that Lindsay just did not seem to care much at all. And like we saw in the TikTok slideshow, Lindsay's resolution of all of this was to give Teresa two and a half hours free time, which then would go alongside the two and a half hours that Teresa has with the deposit money. So that equals like five hours of tattoo time. But as Teresa was told that, you know, the tattoo isn't gonna be finished in just one more session, she thought, well, five hours is not gonna finish this tattoo. So decided that it's probably best to just cut ties and not carry on with the tattoo, which I fully understand because there is a chance that, you know, Teresa would be another two, three, maybe four sessions deep after the initial two that she had to try and get this tattooed finished and she would be down even more money. So I feel like she did the smart thing of saying, you know what, I'm over it, no thank you. I'm not spending any more money, you've had enough. <laughs> At first, Lindsay did not give Teresa the deposit back. So that's when Teresa uploaded the photo TikTok to be like, I'm in tattoo gate myself as well now, so. Hi, hello. And um, oh, lo and behold, would you believe this? Lindsay actually saw the TikTok and instead of, you know, creating a fuss and doing legal action like she has with Christine and Marie, she actually decided to give Teresa back her $850, which um, is very out of character for a scammer if you ask me. I don't know if it's because she just doesn't want any more hassle with this whole thing. I don't know, I don't know what her game is here, but it's very out of character. But you'd think after Tattoo Gate, Lindsay would have changed her ways just a little bit, just, you know, a, a wee bit, just to not scam so much, maybe not charge as much, not take the pee as much, but no. <laughs> I guess leopards never change their spots, do they, so. But anyway, still, Teresa is now out of a lot of money and she has a half finished tattoo or a tattoo that doesn't look the way she wants it to look. There's bits missing, especially with the sunset. In the message exchange that me and Teresa have had, she does blame herself a lot for this. She doesn't seem to want pity or anything like that. But yeah, she really does blame herself for trusting in Lindsay, especially as she knew about Tattoo Gate, but she thought she would give her a chance and you know, maybe it was a whole, you know, witch hunt or what have you. And she wanted to, you know, give this artist a chance. And um, it just seems that Lindsay is legit the way that we thought she was. You know, it wasn't like a one-off thing. No, 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 no. Like it's who she is. But I am glad that Teresa did get the $850 back. Hopefully that can be used towards another tattoo session should she want to go and do that at some point. I would not blame her if she was completely over the whole situation though. Like I would need some time away from anything tattooed after this. But hopefully at some point in Teresa's life, she does get the tattoo that she wants and that she deserves. And I guess this is just a warning to anyone watching this that be incredibly vigilant about who your tattoo artists are. Make sure they're not overcharging you. Of course, tattoo artists do deserve, you know, money and to have a, a wage. <laughs> but for them to be charging thousands of dollars for such little work, that is a big, big red flag. No matter who they are, how big their following is and all of that, you know, like if a tattoo artist is gonna charge so much for so little, it's just awful. 
absolutely not. So anyway, hopefully this might be the end of Tattoo Gate, you know, like I, I maybe not, because again, I'm not sure what's happening with the legal stuff, like I was saying earlier, but <sighs> God, I hope that's the end of it. We don't have to hear of any more horror stories about Lindsay Joseph. I, I just couldn't believe there was another one, like another victim in all of this. Anyway, I just wanna say thank you so much for being here and watching this. Go and send some love to Teresa and love only. Please do not start blaming her or anything like that. <sighs> this kind of thing happens to the best of us, you know? I will obviously leave a link down below to Teresa's TikTok and all of that. Go and check out all of her arts and crafts. It's freaking adorable. And yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you all stay safe and well and until my next one bye